And so in the academic world, the most miseducation is in the so-called social sciences, and the least miseducation is in the physical and biological sciences. What is missing from the social sciences, I can say in a word, is science. <laughs> you know, we know that calling a subject science doesn't make it a science. I'd like to point out the failure of the social sciences to diminish the scale of war, poverty, and servitude as the failure to apply scientific observation to optimize the causes of peace, prosperity, and freedom. Why is it so important to understand cause and effect? Well, here's a reason. The fundamental cause of world war, world poverty, and world servitude is the general failure of the educated and the uneducated classes to understand which social causes lead to which social effects. Humans have consistently aimed for peace, prosperity, and freedom. How? by imposing the very actions that lead to war, poverty, and servitude. Brilliant. When you miss the target, my friend, by 180 degrees, the founders of the American Republic, do they do anything special that we might recognize at least as valuable in our time, which is the time we live in? Well, the founders of the Federal Republic the federal government of 1787 designed history's least coercive, least intrusive, least pervasive political institution for confiscating wealth and freedom. <laughs> Therefore, I truly believe this, we owe the founders a great gratitude for their success on our behalf. Their grand political experiment proved conclusively for all to see, unless they're blind, that little government with little bureaucracy works always far better than big government with big bureaucracy. You don't have to take that on faith. Read the damn newspaper. You know the history of the federal government since its founding in 1787 at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia? Well, you don't have to be a historian to notice that the federal government has been gaining ground year after year, while American liberty has been yielding ground year after year. American political history has confirmed the truth of what I call the Jeffersonian principle of government. The natural progress of things is for liberty to yield and government to gain ground.